Hello everybody, this is Donnie with Pugna.com. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I wanted to apologize for the low volume on my patch analysis video. It was done in haste and hopefully I have corrected the issue for this one and get this out with better quality. So today I wanted to talk about hero spamming and the importance of hero spamming if you are trying to gain MMR or really just get better at the game of Dota in general. So to understand why hero spamming is very effective in both gaining MMR and getting better at Dota 2, we need to kind of understand how human beings learn skills. I'm not going to get super into the science behind it, but I will show you this diagram of a neuron. Neurons are the nerve cells. They are what transmit information from various parts of your body and in your nervous system. And neurons connect to each other through a sort of pipeline called an axon. Think of these axons as a sort of ethernet cord from one neuron to the next. They're what transfers information, they transfer an impulse of, let's say you're playing Invoker and you want to cast Sunstrike. So your brain decides you want to cast Sunstrike, that information is passed through from neuron to neuron, down your spinal cord, into your peripheral nervous system, into your hands, which then execute the action. And if it's your first time executing this action, it might look something like this. So how does somebody go from this to say, Miracle, arguably the best invoker player in the world? And the short answer is repetition. You see, when you repeat an action over and over and over, your brain and your body decide that this pathway is a useful function for your body to do. As a result, the connections between the neurons along that pathway for that action will undergo a process called myelination. Myelination is basically like upgrading your internet to a faster speed. The electrical impulses travel along axons faster, your body gets more and more used to that particular action being done, and as a result, you are able to perform the action more efficiently, more accurately, and at greater speed. A secondary benefit of mastering a skill in this way is that you no longer have to actively think about it to perform it. In a game like Dota 2, this can be very important because things happen very quickly. And the less you have to think about what's going on and the faster you can react to situations, the better you will end up playing in general. The more that you can rely on your muscle memory and intuition to dictate your actions in a game, the more time you can actually spend thinking about the game and strategy and watching the minimap and helping your teammates out. And at this point, you might be saying, okay, I understand. Repeating stuff is very important. So if I just practice last hitting, then I will be good at at Dota 2. If I practice spellcasting, I will be good at Dota 2. But the thing is, is that every single hero has their own cast animations, their own last hit animation, the speed at which they move and turn, and there are so many complexities to playing just one hero that it's actually much more difficult to master the game of Dota 2 than it actually appears. This is why we celebrate people like Miracle, who seems to be able to play any hero at a high level. That ability is not something that he just naturally had. He wasn't born into this world knowing how to play Carry Earthshaker, and Juggernaut, and Invoker, and Sniper, and Shadow Fiend, and all these heroes at a high level. He's actually played each one of these heroes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And through that has developed a lot of synapse connections in his brain that he is then able to draw on at the right time. There's a reason that most professional players have a hero pool that is fairly limited. And it's not just because of the meta. It's because it's actually pretty difficult to switch between a bunch of heroes at a moment's notice, especially when competition is extremely, extremely high. Speaking from my own personal experience, I have a specific set of heroes that I really like to play. I've played them a couple hundred times, maybe more in some cases. And when I play these heroes, I feel pretty comfortable on them. Hero comfort is, I think, one of the most underrated aspects that affects people's play. When you're in the draft screen, I know I do this all the time myself, I find myself looking for ways to counter other heroes. And a lot of the time I'll even pick a hero that I'm not super comfortable on because it's, you know, good for the game. But what I'm not accounting for is that I may not be comfortable enough on the hero to perform at the level that is required to win this game. Let's use the example of Sniper. Let's say that I had played 50 games of Sniper this month. I was basically just playing Sniper over and over and over. And I've also played a lot of Drow Ranger in the past. But if I wanted to switch from playing Sniper to Drow Ranger because it seemed like a good Drow game, but I haven't actually played the hero in quite some time because it's been out of meta or I was bored with it, switching from Sniper to Drow Ranger is going to be much more difficult than one might expect. First of all, the last animation between these two heroes is massively different. 
different. There's no travel time for Sniper, and Drow Ranger has one of the longest windups in the entire game. Assuming that I hadn't played Drow Ranger at all in the last three or four months, there's a pretty good chance that the neural connections that my body had formed from playing Drow Ranger in the past are no longer very active there's a good chance that they've actually degraded to the point where I need to refresh them. I need to relearn the skills that I used to have. One of the nice things about having mastered something in the past and then not using it for a while is that it tends to come back much faster than learning a new skill would. However, it might still take you three or four, maybe 10, even 20 games to really be comfortable to the level that you were before you had taken a break. So basically to summarize, the more that you play a specific hero, the more comfortable you'll be on it because your muscle memory and the neural pathways that allow you to play the hero and do the actions and cast the spells that a specific hero requires will be trained and will be myelinated and will be fast and super efficient in how they function. So how does this actually relate to gaining MMR? And this is one of those areas where I really wish Valve had delivered on their promise for hero-specific MMR, because I think it would help prove the point that I'm trying to make here. Everybody probably has a quote-unquote best hero. It's a hero that they like to play a lot. It's a hero they feel very comfortable on. It's one that they pick often in games and kind of default to when they don't know what else to pick. And this is where hero-specific MMR would be really nice to look at. Let's create a specific example. Pretend that I am a 2.5k player and I've played 500 games of Slurk. I pick Slurk regularly and let's say I have about a 57% win rate on the hero, which is quite good. Now, when I pick Slurk in a game, I'm going to play this hero in a sort of range of ability. If I'm having a bad game, maybe I have a tough laning stage, maybe my team is not supporting me enough, maybe I'm just having a bad day and I'm not very focused, I might be playing this Slark hero at, let's say, a 2K level. Or maybe I'm having a really good game and I'm very focused and I had a good lane and it's a great Slark game and I'm feeling good and I'm very confident and I'm running around the map killing everything because I'm playing Slark at a 4K level in this particular game. So in this particular scenario, I have the ability to play Slark anywhere from a 2K level to a 4K level. That's my range of ability on this particular hero. Now let's also pretend that I've played Huskar one time. Maybe I saw Miracle do it and I thought it was really cool, and so I tried it out, but I was really bad at the hero. But then I see a game and there's lots of magic damage, and I think, okay, this is a great Huskar game. I can totally do this. The mechanics for playing Huskar are obviously quite different than the mechanics required to play Slark. And therefore, when I pick Huskar in this game, I might not even be able to play Huskar at a 2K level. Let's say, let's say that I've never tried to armlet toggle before, which is a very core part of playing Huskar. My range for playing Huskar might be something like 1K MMR to 1.5K MMR. And if I'm in a 2.5K MMR game, which is what my MMR is in this scenario, there's almost no chance that I'm gonna be able to win this game as Huskar, simply because I don't have the ability to perform at the level required to compete at a 2.5K level on this particular hero. This is why you see players getting more and more specialized as they get higher and higher ranked, because they simply don't have the ability to play every single role at a high enough level to compete at the level that they are at. A 7k offlane player likely doesn't have the skill set required to be a 7k mid lane player, because they simply don't practice it enough. And the higher rank you get, the more and more your mistakes and the discrepancy in the skills between the heroes that you play will be punished by those high level players. You might be able to get away with playing a hero at a 2.5k level in a 3k game, but if you're playing a hero at a 3k level in a 5k game, there's a very good chance that you're probably just losing the game for your team. So if you're trying to gain MMR, this is why I keep advocating having a fairly small hero pool. You know, pick three or four, maybe five heroes across a couple different roles, and then just play them over and over again until you're very comfortable on them. The more comfortable you are, the better you're going to play these heroes, and the higher your range of skill and ability on these heroes will be. And if you want to learn a new hero, you need to just kind of accept that you're probably going to lose a lot at first. So whether you play unranked or just accept the loss in MMR by playing ranked to learn the hero, that's just how it is. That is how skills are learned. Music, sports, anything you do in life is done through repetition. And the more repetitions that you have, the higher your skill 
has the potential to be. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Let me know if you like this video. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it helps you understand hero spamming and why it's very effective for gaining MMR and getting better at the game. I hope that you are able to find your hero pool and that you are able to spam those to higher and higher MMRs. Good luck, have fun everybody, and we'll see you next time.